What's up, nerds? My name is Brennan, the nerd of many faces, and to my right, both uh, both this time is uh, Shane at FDS Cosplay and the Sassy Swede, and we are the Knights of Nerd. And below us, you can see the uh, the ever toiling hands of Lee Cozy, uh, premier Star Wars artiste, as you can clearly see, and today. Uh, the piece, uh, well, we're not talking about the piece itself, but we're talking about the subject of the piece, Obi-Wan. But first, a little bit of pleasantries. Uh, hopefully everyone is doing well. Uh, everyone just go around, say how you doing, and so on and so forth. <laughs> how you doing? <laughs> Literally, can it's like I, I, I just, I, I give him instructions and he just follows them to the T. It's great. The voice from beyond. Right. Yeah. I have no head. I just have arms. That's right. His hands are doing the talking. Well, there's two heads right there on the piece of the paper. So I guess you're covered. <laughs> I didn't have, like, okay. So I didn't have Jeez. the equipment to, you know, wire up a, uh, like, I don't have an area of my studio I can show right now because it's covered with non disclosure stuff that nobody can see. So, or piles and piles of mess that I don't want to show. NDAs so, are great. <laughs> you, you get this angle tonight. I apologize, but you know, deal with it. It's a good angle. It's a good it, angle. It, I mean, it, it, like you know, I, I could, I could not. It's like I mean, I could, you know, think of worse things to stare at, other than Obi Wan Kenobi. Yeah, yeah, true, very true, very true. Yeah, very true. You're right. Duck Dynasty is a thing. You know, you could be, you could be staring at me. I already am. <laughs> Anyways. And I do during post. <laughs> that makes it worse. In fact, there's this note here. Get that mole looked at. Remind Shane to get that mole looked at. <laughs> I stare uh, at it. Shane is a thing of nightmares. It's hot outside where sun. Brendan's nightmares. Oh. Save your, your pasty friends. <laughs> and We're the thing is, is that you guys, it's like in terms of like Shane's antics right now, Shane's antics are the least of my worries. <laughs> <laughs> are you worried about me dropping an F-bomb? No, I'm not worried about you <laughs> dropping an F-bomb. I'm not, it's like, I'm not even worried about Shane dropping an F-bomb. It's the whole entire thing of like, this is, since this is not my day job. <laughs> um, and uh, certain things transpired now the whole entire th it's like and my it's like my owner doesn't or my boss doesn't like to make lists where i am doing construction lists are handy yep yes very much it's so. like let's build the roof first it's like no you build the foundation first uh, don't go in reverse order it's like let's build the kitchen now it's like we still haven't built the roof yet <laughs> that's 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 a little bit of what i'm dealing with but it's okay. Uh, but yeah, similar. But uh, Disney Plus's Obi Wan has uh, been mostly met with uh, with fairly high praise. Uh, there have been some things that uh, have been said by trolls that I kind of sort of wondering about their actual validity. Granted, it's you know trolls that say it. Um, but let's just go around and get our first impressions of the episode. Uh, Lee, since you are the, the guest of honor, as it were, or I mean, maybe dishonor, I don't know. <laughs> he hasn't even done anything yet. <laughs> no, he, he's done something and he knows what it is. Oh, Jesus. Uh oh, what did we miss? <laughs> not, not I, saying, I am making a joke right now that it's completely <laughs> going over your head. <laughs> Food. And also Mushu, dishonor on you, dishonor on your family, dishonor on your cow. <laughs> Sorry. Again, I am tired. I'm loopy. This is this is partially. Yeah, you are. Work. Did you hit your head today? It didn't knock any sense into him. <laughs> not today. <laughs> Certainly Take not the two other concussions time. and call me in the morning. Yeah. There you go. Uh, but Lee, go, go ahead and give us what your impression is of uh, the first is as of in terms of time of recording, we are up to episode five. And so the season finale is this Wednesday. coming Wednesday. Uh, yeah. Ju uh, <clears throat> July, July. What day? You, know, is... you, mean, you mean you mean June? Yeah. See, yeah, that's how bad it is. That's how bad it is. <laughs> June 22nd. There we go. There we go. Uh, 
Lee, what are what are your impressions of the show? Uh, I I honestly am thoroughly enjoying it. Um, I I don't know what the trolls are saying. Like I've heard, you know, I've just heard negative things. Like people say, I don't like it, or you know, I wish it was more. Or I would hear people, you know, essentially saying stuff that it's you know, I you know, I want to see more fights. Like I want to see this. I don't want to see Obi Wan as a wimp. You know, so it's yeah, it's it, and I'm just kind of sitting there thinking like it's it's good content, it's good story development, it's good character development. It fills in some gaps, you know. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I mean, I have I have a lot to say about uh, uh, my personal experience in rebooting or telling you know prequel type material uh, to a beloved franchise. I have experience in that, so we can talk about that later. But mm-hmm. um, but overall. I, I think it's a wonderful, wonderful uh, experience. I, I'm, I'm enjoying it. Um, I do have some issues. I did love that uh, as annoying as the little girl is, uh, she is doing an amazing <laughs> job playing, you know, a spoiled little Leia. Because, yep. you know, if you if you remember Leia's attitude from episode four, you mm-hmm. know, it, it was, you know, it's like, I'm here to rescue you. Aren't you a little short? <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. You know, she, she 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 was biting and always, you know, constantly uh, uh, like snarky. So you know, things like you flew, you came here in that. You're braver than I thought. You know, it's like you know, getting the whole flyboy. So there's just so many lines where it was always just her being snarky and fairly aggressive. You know, mm-hmm. and uh, and it's it's funny to see that exact same personality in a ten year old. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah. Just yeah. a ten year old doing the same thing. It's like, you know, tell them I'm your father, grand for them, or like, what was that? Nothing. And like, you know. Yeah. So it's she's I mean, she's playing the character to a T. So I don't understand, you know, what the complaints are because that's Leia's character, you know. I mean, right. it, yeah, it's grating to sit there and go, Oh, this disrespectful little git. But then you realize that Leia has been the respectful like, she's little been like git that. for yeah. quite some time. Exactly. So, but she, you know, she was a very strong personality, and it's nice to see that at ten she had a strong personality. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I've been I've been enjoying yeah. that. I like that. You know, they they told a story <laughs> that forced Obi Wan to leave Tatooine. Mm-hmm. So yes. people who are complaining that there's no Luke in this. It's like, yeah, but those are the same people who are bitching that everything always takes place on Tatooine. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, it's, it's like they're damned if they do, they're damned if they don't. Just shut up and yeah. enjoy the show. And I'm, right. I've, I've been enjoying it. Uh, I, I think it's wonderful. I love seeing Obi Wan struggling to kind of refine himself, to rediscover himself, uh-huh. uh, and find his place in the universe and uh, in the Force. And, uh, but yeah, it's. Uh, I'm, I, I can sit here and talk all night about stuff that I like, but yeah, it, it's I'm I'm thoroughly enjoying. It. I think it's wonderful. Yeah, all right. No, I, I I completely agree. It's been it's been a hell of a ride, dude. It's it's everything that I could have hoped for after Episode Three. You know, it's definitely the acting in it is. I haven't had one issue with anybody's acting or the storytelling or anything like that. Every time Vader is on screen, I get freaking goosebumps because you hear James Earl Jones's voice come out of freaking Vader. Um, Hayden does a fantastic job of embodying Vader, even though I know that there's they're saying that it's not him in the suit all the time, which that's fine. It's not always, you know, the man, you know, it's not always um, Pedro, the, Pedro, 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 pa- Pedro in the Mandalorian. You know, there's two other guys that, that, that do it. So, I mean, it, it works, you know, but just the fact that you know you have this this she's nine when she started when she filmed obi uh, Obi obi-wan uh vivian and she's done a phenomenal job as a young lady like Mm -hmm. just her her attitude from the get-go you're like damn i i you 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 always you always win wonder when she became so sassy and savage well now we know you know (laughs) and so it's it's kind of cool to see um <clears throat> excuse me um to see um oh why am i blanking on his name um jimmy smith's back as bell bell organa bell organa oh okay. <sighs> we got um it. you know he's I I have to get the he pulled that one off <laughs> <laughs> so but uh you know it's just phenomenal i mean the only complaints that i've heard from the show is people complaining about the grand inquisitor 
isn't Jason Isaacs, who voiced the Grand Inquisitor in Rebels, but it's Rupert Friend, who was Agent 47 in the Hitman movie. So, I mean, okay, well, you can't always get, you know, what if Jason doesn't want to do it? Maybe he did that and was like, okay, I'm done. Well, mm-hmm. that, you, know, you, you know, you can't force somebody to come and play another a character again. You yeah, know? and it'd be also have the thing like, you know, it's a, is the person acting more than the budget, <laughs> asking for more than the budget allows. Jason yeah. Isaacs is a named actor. Like, you know, yeah. so getting him in there might be pretty rough. Also, yeah. you know, it's, you know, it, I would have to, I, I, honestly, I personally would go back and look at his features to see, does he have the physicality to also mm-hmm. pull off that character? Yeah, um, right. You know, even though I I don't think this actor necessarily has the same, you know, I, I would have loved to see somebody with more of a sunken face so that they could do the prosthetics more without having to look a little right. Older. But that's well, just the, because I'm spoiled by Doug Jones. Right. <laughs> but the, the crazy thing is, is like, if you look at a picture of the actor that plays the Grand Inquisitor, he does have those sunken cheeks. Yeah. But they they cover them with, you know, with the prosthetics and makeup and stuff like that. So it doesn't look like that. So I'm kind of like, okay, you know, I can, I can understand a little bit of the design for that. What, you know, why people would be upset about it. But I mean, at the same time, I mean, he's, he's done a fantastic job Yeah. and then people, you know, given, um, uh, the actress that plays Reva a hard time for even being in, in the series, it's like, what is what is wrong people people? like just shut up and enjoy the damn show like really because she's not she's done a fantastic job and i love what the the turn her character has taken over the past you know over over each episode Mm -hmm. like she's really had a great not really an origin story but you've really built this character you know into what what she is now and it's going to be really interesting to see where they go from here with one episode left you know yeah. and i mean i i'm a huge i i've watched you know everything from the clone wars through rebels you know so it, it's neat to see the inquisitors kind of come to life uh um sung kang uh who's from uh fast and the furious he was in tokyo drift yep. um him as the uh fifth brother just he's fantastic in that uh raya um uh, i can never say her last name right but the four sister um she's right now the main bad guy in um superman and lois um so when i first saw her i was like man she looks really familiar and then right after i watched obi-wan i watched the week before episode of superman and lois i was like oh my god it's ali alston holy sh-. like okay that that that's kind of cool now i know where i know her from it's so, kind of funny but... that you mentioned sung kang because i actually i actually want to bet off of a friend uh, he's like, is that Benedict Wong? I'm like, no, I think it's the guy from the Fast and the Furious movies. He's yeah. like, wait, what? I'm like, yeah, yeah it's, a, it's the one Japanese guy from Tokyo Drift. And and then he's like, that's Benedict Wong. It's like, no, that wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, granted, Benedict Wong has been in a bunch of yeah. Disney and it's like Disney properties. Yeah. Not saying that he hasn't, but I'm like, no, it's like they, they, they it's like, wow. Well, mm, they probably won't tap him for the Star Wars universe just yet. Right. And Ian McGregor, man, coming back as Obi-Wan has not lost a step. I mean, he it's it, it's it's funny because the last episode that we just got, you know, you got the flashback episode with him and Anakin kind mm-hmm. of doing a practice and it takes place before it takes place I'm guessing during it takes Attack place of the during, Clones. Uh, <laughs> because he still he still has his hand his hand hasn't been cut off yet so um he's not wearing his glove so it's you know he they didn't have to they didn't have to de-age him very much to where kind of hayden christensen looked great but you could tell that he was uh he, he's a little bit older like he kind of had the the crow's feet and eyes a little bit but that 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 whole scene right there just i mean brought everything to to fruition for me you just like i mean there's been feels throughout this whole this this whole these yeah. five episodes and it's just been you know one thing after another and deborah chow who's the one that's uh directing the, the series has done a fantastic job i mean she did a fantastic job with uh the two seasons uh two episodes the episodes that she did in season one and two of the mandalorian and yeah i'm i'm super happy i'm loving this stuff man 
So what's funny, I think, uh, is that you mentioned the crow's feet and whatnot. And I think mm -hmm. that I forgot the name of the studio, but there's another studio, not ILM, that does the de-aging for mm -hmm. U movies. And they are pretty much like the experts in de-aging right now. Yeah. So I really think that they are spoiling everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because when people complain, it's like, oh, you need to de-age him better. And yeah. it's like, you know, four years ago, we couldn't even do that. Just yeah. get over it, you know? Yeah. So yeah, it is, it's, it's interesting, well, you know, to me, it's basically, it's, it's the success of MCU's de-aging mm -hmm. has essentially given people yet one more thing to complain about. Right. <laughs> well, well, the crazy thing is, is it doesn't even look like they use um, CGI to de-age them. It looks like they just use yeah. standard, standard makeup. No, there to, was, I believe, you know what I mean? CGI in that. So yeah, it's just it's it's crazy. It was fantastic, very well, very I know that, very well. But... All right, uh, sweet. What were your thoughts about the show? Pretty much exactly what they both said. <laughs> I, Sorry. I love... uh, no, no, it's fine. I I normally go first, so this is this is great for me. Um, no, I I love <laughs> I love Leia as she is now mm -hmm. so much. I don't understand the complaints. If you didn't like her as an adult, why you're not a you're not gonna like her as a child. Come come on. Come on. Yeah. She's always been our, our sassy space queen. We love her. Mm -hmm. Okay? We're gonna we're gonna just we tolerate no no Leia slander in this house. <laughs> I I love the fact that not only did they bring back Hayden and and have all that other stuff and that he was super excited about it. I love when they're excited to jump back in a role. Ewan McGregor Yes, delicious. Chef I love that man. Oh. <laughs> Careful, yes. we'll tell your wife. Something... She already knows. She's okay with it. <laughs> she, she knows. I mean, come on. I mean, my my gamer tag for the past oh, seventeen that's years true. has been that Obi One. <laughs> it's been Obi One twenty two ninety six. So he gets the Ryan Reynolds pass at this point. Yes. Okay. Yes. But and I love that we got a scary Vader. Oh, a scary Vader. That's what I was looking forward to. Other than seeing a young Leia and that that Obi Wan was having PTSD and struggling with with yeah. being connected to the Force, and the fact that Anakin was still alive, and that Riva knew his name, she knew mm -hmm. who he was, not mm -hmm. Lord Vader, Anakin. Yeah. In Skywalk, I loved that little tidbit. It was like, <gasps> and I'm yeah. like banging on my desk because, of yeah. course, it was like, <sighs> plot twist. But I, I love that we got a scary Vader. Him, him going to these planets, looking for Force sensitive people, drawing them out of their houses and stuff like that, trying to find Obi Wan because that's his main prerogative right now is to find him and say, you know what, we're putting a stop to this. I'm done tried to kill me middle finger yeah. um <laughs> but i love that he's scary i love that he's he's still connected to the force he's still really powerful him holding that shit back loved it yeah. I, I i love it i love that he's scary mm -hmm. how and cool love... was it the, the when they were putting the gear on him when they were yes. putting him together out of the back to tank. Yeah. yeah. And you see like how damaged he is. And yes. then that chest piece to see there's like six inch prong plugs right now. Yeah. Like, it's like just impale him and he grunts as it's sticking into him. You know, it's just like, yep. uh, the only yeah. thing that would have made that better was a better meat kind of sound effect. Yeah. <laughs> a better meat sound. Right. A better kind of stabbing. Noise. Yeah. Yeah, it was kind of funny because one of my buddies, we were talking about it today because we had our, our picnic for all the Star Wars clubs. And he's like, it kind of, the, the whole Obi-Wan not knowing that Anakin is Vader kind of has ruined it for me. I'm like, how? He's like, well, at the end of episode three, Padme's telling Obi-Wan, well, there's still good in him. I'm like, dude, he hasn't told her that Anakin's dead. He knows that she's dying, so she's not going to tell him that Anakin's dead. You don't want her to suffer in her death. Mm -hmm. And he's all, he's all, oh, oh, you just kind of see the light bulbs just kind of going off. I'm like, yeah. Mm. <laughs> it's like, there's the ding. Right. So, so yeah, but uh, that's just, yeah, that, 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 that whole this, thing. Yeah. The, the look on his face when he finds out that Vader is Anakin, yeah. that scared me. <laughs> like, yeah. 
like his his whole demeanor. dealing the demeanor dealing with the ptsd of the clone wars and stuff like that is like thank you like oh my god like we're humanizing all, all, them yeah you've never kind of you didn't see that in you know new hope you saw this old hermit that basically saves luke goes on a journey dies and blah blah blah, blah to where you don't really have the only backstory that we've had of Obi-Wan is episode one, two, and three, you know, from his starts as a Padawan to a Jedi master and training Anakin and stuff like that. So it's just, it's kind of neat to see him struggle. And the fact that he has kind of taken him, taken the, the role of kind of like what Luke did and kind of separate himself from the force because he doesn't really use the force and he when leg falls in episode two off the building mm-hmm. you can see the fear and the uncertainty of whether or not he's going to be able to save her because he's closed himself off for so long he's not sure that he's you know and you kind of see that in his face and in his hand gestures and stuff like that when he's trying to to stop her from falling you see that struggle and you're just like damn that's that that's it's it, it's just those it's those little things and lo- those little nuances throughout this each episode that you see from Ewan McGregor and how he's kind of slowly coming back mm-hmm. to to, yeah. to to the force you know and it's it, things are starting to kind of to, to to come back like you know the the last episode when he's sitting there and it was like an episode of the Clone Wars where the storm you know you know the, the um the the trade federation's coming after him and he's blocking all the shots with his lightsaber well now it's stormtroopers coming after him and he's just he's protecting everybody and he's the one that's at the forefront of everything and you know not scared to uh you know not not the one to be turning around saying we have to run we have to run we have to run it's you go i'll stay mm-hmm. you know so it's it's that whole that light side jedi protector thing again and that's just i love it man i kind of what sassy was saying um with uh vader one thing that i didn't mention was i love it she i think you call him scary vader i like that he's a darker vader i like yeah. that he's he's really From he's the mo- okay the moment that where he snapped his child's neck Snaps a child's neck. Yeah, and we, oh, we just they see him, him butchering young younglings. Yeah, yeah. well, that's kind of where I was getting at was just to to see him as you know that menacing, that violent, mm-hmm. and that you know basically heartless. You know, so you yeah. understand it makes more sense in episode four. Obviously, you know, back in the seventies, they weren't really doing like acrobatic, you know, fights and things like that. Yeah. So, you know, they, they really didn't depict him as very threatening. It was just his physicality of being there. You yeah. didn't actually see him do anything threatening other than pick a couple of people up and choke them. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, but, you know, but to see the level of yeah. menace that he exudes yeah. right now, mm-hmm. it's, yeah. it's so good. Yeah. Uh, and it helps develop, you know, that it basically that scene in Rogue One, you know? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I was just, I was just gonna say that. I mean, you kind of got a little glimpse of that in Rogue One, just in that that end scene where he's going through the hallway, wiping out all the rebels. Yep. You know, and, guy up, slams him against the roof and then slices him in half. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. All right. So yeah, no, that was that was like I every time he's on screen and just the the breathing, James yeah. Earl Jones's voice, the the movements and the way he's just like has that i don't give a shit attitude basically what makes him scary just i get goosebumps every single time and i'm like i i, I want i want to see i want to see a vader show where he is hunting the jedi like i want i i want vader. i want to I, I, I want or like six coming to yeah us yeah right i want like a 22 episode season of, of vader just, just beating the shit out of people and like giving zero you know what we'll give you a video like, game well, where well, you that's... can do it yourself <laughs> <That's probably cheaper. laughs> like, unfortunately shane i don't think that that particular show is going to happen considering it's like okay what it's like it's the 
it's going to be the same thing over and over again. Mm -hmm. Well, they got away with it with Supernatural. <clears throat> there you go. Uh, you go. No slander. Still, I love them. But it's the same, no, it's my my wife is a huge fan of Supernatural, so I yeah. never really got into it. I know, well, I can't say that. I've watched a few episodes, and I love the episodes I saw. I just never got <laughs> to watch it because, you know, by the time I had time to watch it, you know, 10 years had come out, and now to binge yeah. watch it would take me, a, you know, a year or two of just nonstop watching it just to catch yeah. all the episodes. Yeah, I yeah. put it on in the background when I was and, doing uh, stuff. And, and, I, and I like Stargate, so I'll watch that. <laughs> nice. There you go. Guilty pleasure. Okay. <laughs> so uh, I guess I'll, it's like, I guess now is the time for me to give my two cents about the show. Um, Nobody gets it. <laughs> I'm the one who edits all this together. I do. I'm sorry. He just has to make himself look good. Then he's fine. Uh, <laughs> I'm the editor. I'll make myself look good. Right. Exactly. So, uh, I for, it's like I for the most part did enjoy the show. There are some things that I would have done a little bit different in terms of storytelling, but I'm not the writer. I, it's like, and the choices that they made are indeed good ones. Um, I it's like I am of the it's like and this is this is kind of like a personal preference of mine in terms of like how it is that they address the show I think they introduced the it's like the conflict between Vader and Obi-Wan we already know but we yep. didn't need to see that in episode 2 like I don't okay. feel that we needed a fight scene between Vader and Obi Wan that early. No. I, 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 it was still badass though. Put put a pin in that. I mean, it, I, I want to talk to you about that later. But continue with your review, and then we'll swing back to that because I I got a, I got a information on that one for you. Okay. Oh. Oh. Because um, you know, it's, I mean, I enjoyed I en it's like one I enjoy uh the references that they're just throwing in there and there's the weaving of the different lines because um the inquisitors you know most of them from uh rebels and it's like you know most of them from rebels but you also know some of them from uh star wars jedi the fallen order and i've it's like and they've been teasing me it's like they've been doing like the 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 uh the it's Mephistos, uh level of villainy and stuff like that in Loki and the Marvel t television series. Um, they've been teasing a lot of like, okay, we're going to start introducing characters and stuff from Star Wars, the uh, Star Wars, the Fallen Order. They introduced a BD unit uh, in the book of Boba Fett. Uh, I think it was BD-8. Uh, in the Mandalorian episode of the Book of Boba Fett where they had the montage where he was building out his new sick ride um complete with car seat complete with car seat uh, and like the scenery in which they they choose to do stuff as well uh the the spire where the inquisitors are Mm -hmm. that's also taken that i mean that's i don't know where that's it's like if it's straight it's taken straight from the comic game or what have you but like i saw that first in fallen order and i'm like a a am i gonna get to see cal kestis am i going to get to see <laughs> cal kestis please it's like it's like first they're teasing me with ezra bridger now they're teasing me with cal kestis it's like they're teasing me with my fit it's like with some of my favorite jedi and it's like mm -hmm. you, 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 ooh, grr. Um, <laughs> I appreciated the uh, the uh, twist that we just got in episode five. I appreciated the uh, the fight scene that we got in episode five. <laughs> that was that was some beautiful yeah. fight choreo yeah. uh, fight, fight yeah. choreography. Yeah. Um, Which fight? The one between Vader and the third sister. Because remember, that was that fight. What was funny about that fight is it mirrored the flashback fight with Anakin. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yes. So, yep. like, you know, you actually see with Obi Wan, excuse me. So, you actually see Vader using some of the moves that Obi Wan used on him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. 
And I just, I was giggling watching that because I was just mm-hmm. like, that's storytelling, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, it's like, I, I am, it's like, I, I too am glad that, you know, most of this takes place not on Tatooine, but it does, I mean, it's like, but it does take place on a planet in which is very important to the Star Wars universe, Jabeem. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and that's, I think that's something that has been unfortunate that we haven't visited more planets. And granted, you know, now the bu- it's like now budgets, set designs way easier. You know, you can do it in CGI. I can. That's uh, the great thing about the volume is it, yeah, you move a couple of walls and you render something in you know Unreal Engine, and suddenly you've got a whole new set and lighting and environments, and so that's why you're getting like in the Mandalorian. You know, yes, they go to Tatooine a couple of times, but you do get to see. Um, you know, you get to see a lot more planets, mm-hmm. you know, and a lot more settings. Uh, and it, it's just because that, that technology is so easy now. Oh, yeah. And so uh, uh, Obi-Wan is filmed in a volume as well. So it's filmed. They built one in uh, in London just, just for this show. So it'll be, you know, granted, they'll use it for more stuff. But it was created specifically so they could use it for Obi-Wan. Um... You get lots of planets, so. I, I do it's like I also I mean I partially just find it funny that uh you know uh Lola Leia's little droid companion it's like mm-hmm. the droid technology gets better the the farther back in time we go <laughs> well the the cute story about that is the name Lola was the name of of uh, Carrie Fisher's bird when she was a little girl oh okay Aww. so it was a nice little kind of kind of a nice little you know i don't it's like, to, I, it's to, like to, I, I appreciate the nod to the story of that but I, i'm just saying it's kind of funny that the further back in time we go the technology that people have uh, granted this is probably like pre it's like pre hostile imperial takeover because mm-hmm. the empire goes through and takes all the good technology and then mm-hmm. you know says no one can it's like no one else can have good technology except for the empire So keep in mind also, uh, you know, so one thing I try to remind people of is, again, production in the 70s. That, too. Is what it was. So if you look at, a good example is look at uh, Strange New Worlds. Yeah, Star Trek Strange New Worlds, where they're on the Enterprise. And it Mm -hmm. takes place before Kirk gets on. And, uh, And honestly, even though it looks totally different, the overall aesthetic is the same, but they also had it, you know, we have the ability to make it look futuristic. Why not? You know, why not make it look better than we could in the 60s? Right. And uh, so, yeah, when people start complaining that stuff looks newer now, you know, it's because the other thing is, remember, even though it looks cooler, it's highly non-functional compared to an astromech. Yeah. So oh, yeah. it all he does is fly around and and beep and keep her company he's a drone it's a drone drone. yeah Yeah. drone with a flashlight pretty much you know it Mm -hmm. it doesn't really do anything it doesn't have little arms and stuff it's got that one little saw thing that sort of works and that's it yeah so it has it has like one swiss army knife (laughs) it has one swiss army knife attachment and that's all that you get (laughs) yeah Yeah. and he's got he's got a hell of a zoom He's, (laughs) he's got a hell of a zoom lens yeah so um but yeah it so i i so i don't really see as far as the the capabilities of the droid is more what i would look at from a storyteller standpoint than you know how cool it looks Mm because you know if you can make it look cooler now than we could in the 70s oh yeah because now we can 3d print stuff now we can do stuff in cg now we can you know we can do things that they couldn't do in the 70s so yeah uh, so I, I, you know, now you don't have to have a guy in a suit as C-3PO. You can literally have panels that are see-through <laughs> and it looks more droidish and mm-hmm. less like a guy wearing a suit with wires taped to it and then armor over that. Yeah. So, um, uh, so yeah, it's, I, I do think that that's a, uh, that's just one of those things I think fans need to let it go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because also think uh, in Strange New Worlds, kind of one of the things I was getting at is when they get in the elevator, when they get into the letters, when they get in the... <laughs> When they take the turbo, turbo lift, <laughs> they grab the handle and say where they're going. 
that's a holdover from the original series. Mm -hmm. But the turbo lifts look way cooler than a cardboard box with a broom handle, <laughs> which is what they were in the 60s. So it's yeah. kind of cool to actually see them walk in, grab the thing, say where they want to go. And so they're using it the exact same way. It has the same functionalities. Mm -hmm. It just looks cooler because we have LED lights now. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, I think the, the only other thing that I've heard of complaining on is on the design of Vader because in A New Hope, you ha he has his... So your robe, so you have your your mid robe or whatever you want to call it, is over the. That's called your, the cloak. Your, 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 okay, whatever. <laughs> over 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 his shoulder armor, mm -hmm. and then it's very rustic and painted on. Looks like he's been through hell and back. And then in Rogue One, he's all brand new. And then in this one, he looks like he's from Empire. So I've heard people complaining that, you know, because they're not being consistent with the the design of Vader, that people are upset about that. Who cares? It's Vader. Freaking what I would Vader. love to see them do. I didn't even days. notice. I, I was just want... excited. <laughs> I want a fight with Vader and some random Jedi. Don't even care who it is. Mm -hmm. After episode four, before episode five, where the lightsaber comes in and clips off the widow's peak on his helmet. Yeah. So for anybody who's complaining about the, you know, because episode four is the only one where he has a widow's peak. Mm -hmm. And uh, other than the fact, you know, like I usually like this is the first time I have probably drawn Vader in years where I haven't drawn the Widow's Peak because I liked the Widow's Peak. I just thought I actually originally had it drawn in here, but I thought it looked weird. Put it on camera a little better. But I thought at this angle, the Widow's Peak kind of crept in that way and I thought it looked weird. So I changed it. But yeah, originally I actually drew the Widow's Peak on here because that's how I draw Vader. I like right. Vader with the Widow's Peak. Mm -hmm. um, I honestly thought it looked more menacing and it looks a lot like the original concept art uh that ralph mccurry did so you know but uh but that's only an episode four thing mm -hmm. so it's again it kind of kind of comes down to the whole thing of if there's not a storytelling reason behind it um i you know it's like i understand like when they made the original like the original helmet when they made that in episode four they weren't thinking oh yeah this is going to be you know we're we, we've got a franchise on our hands guys mm -hmm. You know, that all that stuff was mostly damaged, destroyed, beat up. It wasn't taken mm -hmm. care of. Yeah. Um, and it was unusable for the, you know, subsequent movies. In fact, it actually chipped, which is how yeah. that happened. Um, right. uh, but they ended up, I believe, using that to remold it. I think the issue I have with this Vader is the outer helmet part. The, the silhouette of it looks strange to me. It doesn't flare out enough. Mm-hmm. So I have I have like a weird complaint just from an artist standpoint of, of somebody who has to draw Vader a lot, uh, you know, and I, you know, working on Star Wars stuff, it grates on me that, you know, I'm going to have an art director at some point, look at a pic, look at this version of Vader when I'm trying to draw an episode for Vader and they're going to be like, well, the helmet's flared out too far. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I know that's going to happen because it's all, it happens to me with Boba Fett all the time. Uh, yeah. when, I, when I draw Boba Fett, the art director, if they're looking at the wrong episode style guide or the wrong, you know, television or wrong movie style guide or something, uh, they're going to bounce it back and say your armor's wrong. Mm -hmm. Even though it's like, no, no, it's episode four, not episode, you know, right. uh, three or, you know, whatever. That's yeah, because three. between, because from Empire to Jedi, his, yeah. the colors changed as the well. The colors changed, the damage pattern on his yeah. helmet changed. Uh, yeah. And that was kind of what I was doing. If I did an episode five Boba Fett one time, and I got three pages of notes from an art director who had just joined the company uh -huh. uh, from the Disney side. And <laughs> when they're sitting there like, oh, you've got the wrong, you're using the wrong blaster. You're using, you know, the, the gauntlets are the wrong color. The, uh, you know, like, I mean, it was just three pages of notes. I was like, oh my God, this is nuts. This is a totally different painting. So let's, let's go through it. What, explain to me what you mean by off, the blaster is off model. And they sent me back a, uh, a JPEG of uh, Boba Fett's blaster from Return of the Jedi. And I was all like, oh, I can solve all our problems right now. You're looking at a Return of the Jedi style guide. 
I drew an Empire Strikes Back Boba mm-hmm. Fett, and the AD's head exploded, and he wouldn't talk to me for six months. <laughs> <laughs> I literally oh, didn't hear back from that particular art director for six months. Wow. Until another art director replaced him and they came in, looked at it, and I said, what's the status of the Boba Fett piece? And they looked at it and said, that's a beautiful episode five Boba Fett. It's approved. Why is it, <laughs> why is it even sitting in approvals for, you know, five, six months? And it's all like, your guess is as good as mine. Oh. So, but yeah, it, it it is something that happens, um, and uh, yeah, the the ch- constant changing of the of the stuff, or of the armor, and you know how the designs change from movie to movie to show to show, yeah, is uh, yeah, it's frustrating just beyond the fans. But I also do think that uh, maybe it's because of my personal experience with it, having to deal with the approvals and stuff. Sometimes I just want to shake people and say, "Let it go!" <laughs> right? Oh my God, I, I feel you on the approval part. Jesus, just, oh, just oh, enjoy Lord. the enjoy what you've got. <laughs> You know, it looks it. good. Just leave it alone. <laughs> exactly. You know, do, when you look at it, do you see Vader? Yes. Yeah, okay. Right. If you right. see Gully, so we have a problem. Right. So, uh, oh. Lee, what was the what was the thing the the so the the comment that is like the or the phrase that you want me to put a pin in? Ah. So uh, it's like I, my per, of my personal standpoint that I thought that we brought the uh, fight between Obi Wan and Vader too soon. I I I've talked to a few people about this. I said I would have much liked to have seen this as a Pokemon type thing where you take on your rival and then you go through and fight the Elite Four, which could be more Inquisitors, and then <laughs> you fight uh, Vader, who is the champion. <laughs> I see it more from the standpoint of Star Wars storytelling. Mm-hmm. When okay. Luke, Luke fights Vader in episode four, and he essentially has stuff getting thrown at him, and he gets his hand cut off. And, I'm sorry, episode five. My apologies. Um, sorry, we're too many episodes. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so Empire Strikes Back, he fights Vader for the first time. He goes toe-to-toe with Vader, and he gets his ass kicked. Yeah. Mm-hmm he has to learn humility. He has to learn that he's not the man he was, or he has to learn he's not capable of doing what he needs to do. Mm-hmm. In the case of Obi-Wan, he has to learn that he is no longer the man he was. And he knows that, that's why he's avoiding everything. He's like, I don't wanna do this, I can't do that. I Don't make me do that. By making him fight Vader that soon and get his ass kicked so thoroughly, it essentially, cause remember, in the, all those flashbacks, he's standing toe to toe with Anakin. Yep. You know, he's keeping up with him. Anakin beats him every now and then, but he still, mm-hmm. for the most part, can out. He can out fight out- Anakin. Yeah, he mm-hmm. can still out fight Anakin to an extent. And uh, now he absolutely has no chance against uh, against Vader. Yep. So you see not only how far he's fallen, but you also see that Vader hasn't learned the lessons mm-hmm. because those flashbacks, he's making the exact same mistakes in those flashbacks, other than of course, when he uses uh, Obi-Wan's techniques against uh, Third Sister. Right. But, um, but as far as things like, you know, falling for the decoy ship and things like that, because he's so focused on getting revenge, so focused on, on his target that he misses the big picture. Right. Yes. So One, it... didn't get that aspect of the thing. So that fight has to happen right. in episode two. It has to happen early on. Episode one is for establishing the scene, the scenario, why Obi-Wan has to leave the planet, and that Anakin's still alive. Episode two, initial confrontation. From a storytelling standpoint, you want to show that juxtaposition. Where are these two characters in their abilities, you know, in their character growths and whatnot now compared mm-hmm. to each other? And you do that with conflict. Yeah. And no, it's like, I'm not, it's like I'm not saying not have the fight conflict. scene. Well, no, 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 but but you have to have it in episode two, mm. or, or at least early on. And that way, because you need to have another one later on, next episode, last yeah. episode, right. no, where he the, actually fights Vader and potentially, you know, goes toe-to-toe with him and actually is able to fight him off yet again. Okay. Right. Remember, at one point, he almost killed, he basically thought he killed Anakin. Yeah, right. Well, yeah. I mean, it's... And... It, it even makes the whole fight in episode four, not even the fight, just the yeah. 
the conversation between Vader and and, and Obi Wan, and when Vader says, "Now I am the master," yeah, that whole this whole thing makes that make more sense now. Yeah, you know what I mean? Because who knows? You know because of that line. Yeah, Obi Wan has to win next episode. Right. Exactly. So because of that one line in a movie 45, 50 years ago, however long ago it was, 45 years ago, right? Years ago. Yeah, 45 years ago. So because of that one line in a movie 45 years ago, Obi-Wan has to win. Right. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense. Exactly. Exactly. And Obi-Wan has to win because had he won in the second, in the second episode, well, then... Obi-Wan's just an ultimate badass, and there's no reason to really tell this story. It's like, oh, yeah, so Obi-Wan spent his weekend saving Leia, and he's yeah. back on Tatooine, and everything's fine. Why? Because he's so awesome, nothing yeah. was a challenge for him. So, so oh, hold no, on. I think that there's a misunderstanding in terms of where it is that you think I'm going. Uh, I'm not saying that... That's like, I'm not saying that there need, that there isn't need, that there doesn't need to be a conflict. What I w was like, what my where my brain went is that it shouldn't like because where my brain went is that okay he shouldn't it's not rocky three again and what i mean by that is that in rocky three rocky balboa fights clubber lang clubber mm -hmm. lang beats rocky rocky then goes through and finds a new method of training in which that uh it's like through it's like through apollo creed and then goes and beats clubber lang again so but what I was, it's like what my purpose, like what my original thought was, is that Obi Wan does indeed fight, but he doesn't fight Vader. Mm -hmm. So you're basically saying that the fight between Obi Wan and Vader should be the climax of the series, and they they basically had the climax too early. Yes. Why? My question then to you would be, why can't they have two fights? why can't he have a fight where he loses mm -hmm. and basically has to rediscover himself remember he just was able to find, he's he wasn't able to use the force it was only through yeah. panic that he was yeah. able to save leia well i'm just, it's like kind of what, that's kind of what they're illustrating so from a storytelling standpoint that's why it's so necessary it has to be vader mm -hmm. but what if because it's what if it's, a, what if it's what if somebody who's weaker than vader but you've already have the comparison of of uh, Obi Wan has beat Vader before. Obi Wan right. is the only person who's ever beat Vader. But what right. if Vader? Was, okay, so how about it's like what if, it was like what if this were the thing? What if Vader was there and sends a brother or sister to go fight Obi Wan, and Obi Wan gets his butt kicked? It would be out of character for Vader because they've already out demonstrated that he's too impulsive, mm -hmm. and that he would not stay out of that fight. He would interfere. He would go in there. He would tell everybody else, "Get away! He's mine." Right, you know, because okay. Vader's character. And when you and when you think about it, it, think about this. You know, just let me like kind of go Get here. There. But oh, yeah, right. so so it really wasn't a fight between Vader and Obi Wan. It was basically Vader had, wiping the table. You know, doing to Obi Wan what he did to Anakin. Mm hmm. It was revenge. Vader, Vader wanted wanted. It wasn't about fighting Obi Wan. It wasn't about killing Obi Wan. It was about revenge and making Obi Wan feel what he felt mm -hmm. on Mustafar when he had the high ground mm -hmm. and took his arm, his two legs, and left them there basically dead. Yeah, he lit Obi Wan on fire. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for no and, reason. But to right. Oh, and, no, there was a oh, reason. Not, it's like I'm not saying that the motivation. It's like the motivation. I'm I'm not finding disagreement with the motivation at mm -hmm. all. I just had a slight issue because it's like because that's where I mean that's where ultimately where it took me. It's like okay now this is the Rocky Three version of Star Wars. We've had the conversation. It's like we all have had the conversations about how. And it's like, and maybe that's what this is. And maybe if I start looking at it through that got uh, through that, uh, it's like through those lenses, maybe I'll like it a whole lot more. And maybe I will like episode two a whole lot more than what I, than what I originally did. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we say that the Mandalorian is the, sp is the spaghetti Western of, 
uh, Star Wars. We say that the Book of Boba Fett is the crime boss show. We are saying that Andor is going to be the, the spy, like the Mission Impossible yeah. stuff yeah. for Star Wars, and so on and so forth maybe this it's like maybe if i it's like probably because i will go back and watch it again go back and watch it with the premise of this is the beaten up cop whose ex-partner comes and kicks his butt and he realizes that he needs to go through and be better maybe it's like maybe i will have less issue with that at the time when I first watched it, I'm like, this is kind of weird. I mean, it's cool. Don't get me wrong. I enjoy it. It's like, I, I enjoyed it, but like l- thinking about it, I'm like, huh, why'd they go this route? And it's like, and you guys brought up very valid points. It makes sense for that. It was like for this fight to be there. Mm-hmm. It, it all comes down, nothing more then it gives the show a chance to give character growth mm-hmm. to because we already know Vader's not going to have any character growth in the show. Yeah, no, and maybe no, it's because you know. it's only six episodes long that they had to place it that that they had to place it there in the first place. Yeah, but um, uh, but I, I, you know, but we do need to see that character growth because Obi Wan essentially is afraid. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. You know, he's sitting there. He's like, I must protect the child. It's like, cool, but you've lost touch with the force. How are you going to protect the child? Right. You know, what are you going to protect him against? Because right. if something, of, if, if, if a serious threat hits Luke before he had to go on this adventure uh, to save Leia, Luke's screwed. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you what? know, Obi-Wan's not in any condition to help him. Well, it's, it's what's interesting, too, is so... Going kind of the whole, I, I I know I talk lore a lot most of the time, but like, you know, in, so episode three, right? So a lot, a lot of lore came out with the, the way that the Jedi's kind of use the force, right? So mm-hmm. we find out that Mace Windu's very in the middle. He uses the dark side and the light side in his, his fighting style and stuff like that. And, you know, as you read on and stuff like that, o- Obi-Wan kind of uses that same kind of style not as much of the dark side as like mace does like mace is like gray jedi kind of in the middle there to where obi-wan's still in the light side but he still does use kind of some of the 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 dark side aspects in his in his fighting style so it's gonna i i i kind of want to see that kind of come back into fruition with him getting his you know his 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 force powers back i guess you could say um you know and see that kind of come out a little bit as to this is how i'm going to beat vader like go more towards kind of that gray jedi side where you're kind of flirting with the dark and the light a little bit because i feel that is what one that would be fantastic storytelling to kind of bring that whole thing in like you don't have to say it but you can see it in in the demeanor and how he moves and how he fights mm-hmm. you know so it's it's definitely going to be something that i'm going to be looking forward to and kind of watching very closely in the next episode since we only have one episode left and if we do get a season two because that's been rumbling around the rumor mill for the past since the since the season came the the miniseries came out you know to kind of see that kind of grow a little bit and i mean it's just it's it's very interesting to to see Vader full on just aggro dark side, <laughs> like you know, and it's 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 definitely scary, and it and it makes sense where where Ewan was like the first thing he saw saw um, Hayden in Vader, and that scene he was scared shitless, you know, and that just you know that, that's fantastic to see that, but yeah, I definitely want to see them kind of bring some of that that lore into to obi-wan's fighting as he is getting his kind of his his uh his mojo back per se so you want to see him do the what is it form four yeah pose yep <laughs> yep the the icon the iconic form four pose that obi-wan is uh very well known for yes. um 
All right, we're well. We're getting close to approaching the end of our as, uh, the end of this episode. So, uh, Shane, let's hear. You say I want to hear more from Sassy because we kind of. Oh. She has this said much. <laughs> I predicted this when I, I was feel, talking I to feel bad. He's like, day. it's almost over and Lee won't shut up. It's like, ah. <laughs> no, I fully anticipated this being a, a situation. No, I, I agree with pretty much everything that's been said. Yes, I think the Vader fight should have been there. Did I wish it was cool? Everybody wishes it was cooler. We want more acrobatics and lightsabers. You're right. a liar if you say no. Mm-hmm. Don't, yeah, but don't, don't, but don't at me. But Vader can only go this high with his lightsaber. He can't go over his head. Come on. Now. <laughs> That's beside the point right now. But you know what I mean. I love that we got a scary Vader. I love that we got a sassy Leia. I love that we got a scared shitless Obi Wan because mm-hmm. character development. Yep. And if you get all those those angry Star Wars fans, as per the status quo, there, you're not going to please everybody. But I think. I think humanizing both, and I'm and I'm gonna be speak very generally. Humanizing Vader, humanizing Obi Wan, and humanizing Leia as as people being scared, mm-hmm. being angry, not knowing exactly what to do. Even Reva, if you want to bring her up, which mm-hmm. she is an actor, she's a person. Mm-hmm. Stop yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. It's the same thing they did to Rose. Yes. In... Yeah. No. They're, they're yes. people. They're people. Leave them alone. Okay. You don't like the character. Take it up with other people. Just don't attack the, the, the person, the actor. No. Yeah. Oh, is it the, I, guy, the kid who played Joffrey in Game of Thrones got punched by somebody? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, well, it's like, and there, I mean, I think the person who actually said it the best is Ewan McGregor. It's like, mm-hmm. there are how many billions of species in Star Wars? Yep. Stop it. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody who says this type of stuff is not a true Star Wars fan. I, I, yep. it's like they, it's like Ewan McGregor said it the best. Yep. So, yeah. He straight up laid down the law and said, no, no, thanks. We don't want you in our fandom. You, we should just be glad we're, we're getting this. Honestly. And this be is... glad it doesn't suck outright. Right. Yes. Just be so... grateful for what we're given. We're getting more lore after. Disney acquired Lucasfilm and all that other stuff, and they they said, okay, the books are no longer canon. Which all of those X Wing files, me. all that other stuff. Yes, they really should not should not have done that. Yeah. They're allowed to tamper with and make whatever storylines they want, but they should have left the ones that fans had for the longest period of time intact. The Han yeah. Solo trilogy by far better than the Han Solo movie. Exactly. Yeah. X Files, the 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 Death Troopers, whatever they were, for missing one of my favorite characters. Um, okay. Ghost. It's like uh, it's like uh, Rogue Squadron. Well, actually, no, there was Rogue Squadron and Ghost Squadron too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they they yeah. take all of that lore and said shove it. We're gonna do our own lore, which they really should have done, in my opinion. And that's that's beside the point. Just be glad and grateful for what we're given. We're getting more lore. We're getting more Star Wars. They're finally mm-hmm. taking a break from forcing the movies because, yeah. let's be real, I'm a little disappointed in them. <laughs> and that's you my opinion. You are the only one to say that. I- yes, it's my opinion. Welcome to Earth. We're, we're all... Opinions are like buttholes. We all got one. And, and they all stink. stink. They all stink, according to other people. So <laughs> we're just going to have to be grateful for what we're given. We are given these nice little gems here and there. And this is a nice one. It's, it's okay, you don't like a sassy Leia. She was sassy the whole time. All right, cool. Yeah. That's the one thing you don't like. Great. Uh, you don't like Vader's outfit. Sucks to be you. He's killing children. <laughs> um, you, you, you I like, like, like Vader. It's like, that's your one complaint about Vader is his outfit looks weird. Meanwhile, he's slaughtering kids. I, yeah. I didn't even pay attention to 90% of what people were complaining about because I was like, we're getting character development. We're getting backstory. Yeah. We're getting what happened. And the aftermath of, of the Clone Wars, he, he, he has to come to terms and deal with the fact that he thought he had killed his Padawan. Mm-hmm. The one the one person he shouldn't have had that much attachment to. Yeah, because Obi Wan did Jedi. break. It's like uh, Obi Wan did break the uh, one of the cardinal rules. Cardinal of the Jedi. rules of the Jedi Order. Do you were my brother. You were my brother. I loved you. <laughs> yes. Oh. 
we're having him finally we're, we're watching him process this he's got ptsd from being in the wars fighting all those all of that killing the person you love and you think you think you did it by your hand and you watched him burn and suffer yeah and meanwhile the enemy is telling you no he's alive meanwhile we're chasing his legacy and padme's legacy because we know who she is we know she's force sensitive mm. all right let's go they don't know about luke so he's okay what am i gonna do i gotta save this kid i gotta go back and make sure this kid's okay i can't use the force he's processing this is the character development we crave but we just don't know it because we're so worried about if darth vader has a widow's peak or um mm -hmm. you know what in this episode he he held up one finger and it had a red dot on it like who oh, gives a flying fuck get over <laughs> it get over it and the red button was on the it. other side exactly I would never have noticed that his costume was different had y'all not said something. I was just excited he was there. <laughs> Keep in mind, I only pointed that out because that was part of the discussion about oh, things know. that people complained about. I yeah. do not complain about it. No, 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 you don't. I don't care. Like only, like I said, only thing to me is I think it looks a little weird, and I just know from a professional standpoint. Yes, I'm because I'm gonna you're... have an art director at some point flag me. For yeah. because I like drawing. I I I don't think any picture I've ever done for one of the 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 Disney projects uh, or Lucasfilm projects that I've done of Vader has ever been absolutely style guide because every one of them has pretty much been Empire Strikes Back with a uh, with the Widow's Peak with a tweet. which is an which is a a New Hope version of the bucket of the helmet. Mm -hmm. yeah. So technically, nothing I've ever done for Disney or Lucas film or Darth Vader wise is actually canon. This is it a professional works. artist for Disney and Lucasfilm. Let's have a round of applause that everything's <laughs> going to be perfect. Right. And this is what we need to just and it's Star Wars fans yeah. are the most toxic. Right. I, I so, love them. I'm one of them, but they are horrible. Yeah. Well even when you think about it too, I mean, okay, so this is gonna be the fifth different set costume for Darth Vader. You know, we had a New Hope, Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi at the end of episode three, Rogue One. Oh, sorry, this is gonna be the sixth. Sorry, I take that back. And now Obi-Wan, yeah. okay? The costumes are different in all six things. Mm -hmm. exactly. at, the, at the end of episode three, his shoulder pauldron is all one piece and it sits here and does not move. Yep. So he can't take and you know do this with his arms, right? So I look at it this way, like, hmm, which version of Vader do I wanna do? I've got six to pick from now. Exactly. You yeah. know, but and... you know, the funny thing is, is you don't see this kind of issue when you go into the Marvel universe. Captain yeah, you America do. Has... Yeah, you do. 70... But you don't see people freak out about it every yeah. five seconds. If there's a new right. movie with Captain America, he's got you know, a new suit. Everyone yeah. jumps on it. They're like, holy shit, yeah. I gotta have that. Oh, suit. I like yeah. the suit right from now. Civil War. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I need the stealth suit, which. Oh, I need that one now. Oh, you know what? I need the classic um, 1960s. Star Spangled. Yeah, there she is. Uh, um, but yeah, it, it's Star Spangled under rooms. Oh, oh right. but, but, it, it but Lee was matter. making a point. We're, we'll we'll yeah. let him finish his point up. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, it was kind of a long point. But um, what I was saying is like, so as we mentioned, as Sassy mentioned, I work for Lucasfilm. I, I'm a freelance artist for Disney um, and Lucasfilm. But uh, I also at one point was creative director of Speed Racer and I worked on Voltron and various other projects. But I remember having a conversation uh, when I was working on Voltron with uh, Tommy Yoon, who is the creative director of Robotech. And he also was the director and uh, uh, co-director, co-writer on Robotech The Shadow Chronicles, the, uh, the anime movie that took place after the Robotech television show. And I remember how much the the Robotech fan base had been screaming, we want more content, we want more content, we want new content. And 30 years later, they've got new content. And then they're like, what is this content? This isn't what we wanted. We wanted this story that in our heads for the last three decades, we've made up. Yep. And so we had our own fan fiction. We had our own version of how things should go. We had our own, you know, kind of ideas of stories and stuff. And, you know, Speed Racer had that. Voltron had that, Star Wars had that. And, mm -hmm. you know, thankfully Star Wars at least had the expanded universe kind of kept things going. 
uh, in the interim between movies and things. So, uh, and George was gracious enough when he did the prequels to actually pull in, he threw away a lot, but he did pull in a lot of the stuff from the expanded universe. I personally, um, you guys are probably going to hate me, but I personally don't have a problem with Disney saying these are not canon. Yeah. They didn't stop producing them. Right. They just said they're not canon. Those stories are still there. I have them on my bookshelf. I can go read them at any time and still thoroughly enjoy them. Yeah. Um, yeah. But what I really think Disney should have done uh, is when they were working on the sequel trilogy is they should have sourced that material and mm-hmm. said, yeah. what cool stuff has already been created for Star Wars that we can make an amazing story out of? Because yeah. what you have is you have 30, 40 you know, years of fans imagining what they would have done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thinking of like what would happen if Darth Vader went to Tatooine or ran across Obi Wan, you know, between Episode Three and Episode Four. Yeah, what would that fight yeah. be like? And that's why people were mad. That's why people are upset that Obi Wan got his ass kicked in Episode Two. It's mm-hmm. one of the big reasons because they were like, no, 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 he was the guy who he's the only person who ever beat Vader. It's like, yeah, but he's been hiding in a cave for ten years. Yeah, you know, he hasn't been training. In fact, they 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 flat out show that when he sits there trying to force communicate with Qui Gon, and he gets crickets. Mm-hmm. And you know, I was sitting there, kind of like, well, technically he's in a desert, no crickets, but you get my point. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, like nothing, absolute silence. So you know, it, it fans, they're so sometimes driven by their own imaginations that it's to the detriment of the things they love mm-hmm. and because you do have people you know there's some fantastic fan fiction out there you mentioned supernatural you know one of the things again i didn't watch much supernatural but one of the things i thought was fascinating was talking to one of the writers at one point he said yeah we ran out of ideas we literally couldn't come up with anything so we started reading fan fiction yeah i've heard and of that then too. they started actually writing stories And suddenly they get, they're like, oh my God, the fans have such great ideas. So they started writing their new scripts, but, you know, using fan fiction as inspiration and, you know, and they were able to embrace it. You know, uh, if you want, you know, if you want to throw away the expanded universe for Star Wars, yeah. But now you can think of it as really well-written fan fiction. It's essentially written by some of the best writers in the industry. And yeah. it's your characters and it's your property and you own all that source material. You can do your own stories with it. So therein lies the problem when you do something like this, or when you tell a story 30 years later, or you fill in a plot hole or a gap in a story or a timeline in a beloved franchise is the fan's imagination will have a negative impact significantly. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and that's just, everything you know uh with speed racer i think we kind of cheated because we did a thing where uh we pointed out in the stories we were telling we would actually stick like lines in the comics and in the scripts and stuff we were working on there were lines that literally were background dialogue from the tv show Mm -hmm. and we did that on purpose because you know it's like there's a big accident it's like oh he's not gonna wait to walk away from that one steve and we would put that line he's you know crash he's not going to walk away from that one steve like that's in the background (laughs) and but that's a time stamp for anybody reading our story to know oh this takes place in between these other scenes at this very moment in the cartoon from the 50s right or 60s or i forgot the exact the comic i think the manga was made in the 50s the cartoon was made in the 60s but um but yeah, so we were actually we were we were using those as timestamps, and so that sort of saved our butts uh, from a lot of fans backlashing because they realized we weren't retelling the story, we weren't reinventing or anything. We were literally just telling what happened on the other side of the racetrack or what happened with these other people that you had seen in this other story, and you were giving backstory on things like that. So that kind of helped us because we found a way to inter- integrate new stories and literally kind of weave them into existing content. And, you know, the expanded universe didn't do that very well, which is why I'm okay with them getting rid of it and saying it's not canon. Mm-hmm. I do think it was a massive shortcoming on Disney's part, not to source that material and use it for the inspiration, like 
Supernatural did uh, to create new content, which, by the way, is why Dave Filoni is a master at the stuff he's been doing uh, on uh, the Book of Book of Boba Fett and The Mandalorian, especially because he's sourcing and all well, those Rebels, Clone Wars, you know, um, because he's sourcing all that, all those characters and the backstories and stuff from things from the expanded universe. And he's a true fan of the project. And right. so he understands all the characters and, and he understands storytelling. Uh, for those who don't know, Dave Filoni also worked on Avatar The Last Airbender. Um, the nickel, the freaking mind blowingly amazing an uh, American anime, essentially. Yep. Um, but, you know, that's Dave Filoni's storytelling. He was the storyboard artist and the director on most of that, supervising director, I believe, on, on most of that. So he knows what he's doing. He's a good storyteller. He's an amazing world builder. And a lot of the times they bring in people to work on these projects or reboot projects or fill holes, and they're not world builders. And so that's why I like the fight in episode two. It shows how far Obi-Wan's fallen. Yeah. Hopefully episode six, we see an epic fight and Obi-Wan stands toe to toe and it has to happen because if it doesn't again, either we need a season two <laughs> or that line in episode four makes no sense. Yeah. 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 So we'll right, find so out if we're going to get a season I think Lee two. just gave, gave his prediction. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm in the same boat too. We're going to find out if we're going to get a season two after this this episode. I I don't think we're gonna I I don't think we're gonna get to see Vader and Obi Wan fight in this finale. I think it's gonna be the third sister going after Obi Wan or no, it's gonna be she, the third sister going she, after Luke. Yeah, that's what I was just gonna say. That she's gonna <laughs> she's huh? she's going to be going to try and get Luke from Tatooine, and that's gonna bring Obi Wan back. Well, here's a crazy that one. That fight's me. gonna that fight is gonna that fight's gonna end up happening, and Obi Wan's that's when Obi Wan's kind of like everything's gonna come together for him, in the fight with her, and then hopefully, and if we do get a season two, then we'll get that 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 epic <clears throat> battle between Obi Wan and Vader. I just I don't I from the way that episode five ended, I don't see how I mean. I don't see how that fight could accumulate in the next episode. Well, do like, take into it consideration, would, it, would, it, would, it would feel too rushed. Do you take into consideration, Shane, that this episode, the episode six, is going to be the longest episode of the series? What, an hour? They've been all generally running about an hour. I'm thinking 90 minutes. Oh, yeah, I didn't look. So here, here's a thought for you, Shane. Yeah. What if, because Obi Wan was able to get through Third Sister, uh -huh. able to get through to her, and you know she was able to seek revenge on Anakin? How much you want to bet she goes to kill Luke, uh -huh. or find out the secret or whatever? But she's intent to kill Luke to get revenge, but then actually discovers Luke's secret potentially, and because she's sort of halfway you know or not halfway she's more dark side than she is light at the moment uh -huh. but what if obu and everybody thinks she's dead she's the perfect candidate to become a gray jedi Ooh, yeah so and it's like by the way you want revenge again and against anakin keep his kids alive yeah that would be the ultimate revenge against anakin is him suddenly having to fight you know uh, or you know, basically training his his kids, or not training, but uh, having to fight, being a, being there to protect his kids so they can grow up to train and fight their father. Yeah. So I like that idea of the gray Jedi potential. Yeah. No, I like that too. I like that too for sure. I'm a gray Jedi stand, so this will be good for me either way. <laughs> See, I, I am. It's like I'm kind of in the same boat. Well, it's like I mean. I do think that we're going to see a uh, third sister go forth and try and find young master Luke. <laughs> right. And it's like, I, it's like, and I do like the idea that Lee just proposed 
that, you know, something like, for instance, out of fear, Luke stops her from essentially, I mean, basically it's, because this would also be an interesting bit of storytelling. It would be the same thing that was done in the rise of Skywalker that Luke prevents his death at the hands of the, of the third sister, the same way that Ben solo stopped his death. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, I, I was like, I was like out of instinct, you know, Luke just force pushes her out like you know yeets her out the window mm -hmm. and uh let's see i that's like i was also trying to uh potentially find how long this episode is going to be it's not going to be 90 minutes so basically the 90 minute thing was they're actually going to be airing it in a theater and it was including a q and a that's why it was 90 minutes so they're estimating the episode about 50 minutes long Okay, so then it's about average. Yep. That's unfortunate. <laughs> yep. Unless they're lying to us, because they've been they've been known to do that. Correct. True. It it, it is Lucasfilm and Disney. They they have they have uh, subverted expectations by a lot before. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That is something I love that uh, Disney's been really good at because um, one thing that always irritates me is the people who break down trailers and try to predict what's happening. I, I, I have to avoid those channels like the plague. And the sad thing is, is a lot of times that content is on channels that I like mm. um, mm -hmm. or their other content, but I hate it when they break down a trailer in, in, you know, in ways of trying to predict the story because I want to see that story. I want to experience it. I'm not I a trailer watcher. Spoiled. Yeah. I don't mind the trailers. I love trailers. But what yeah. I love about Star Wars is, uh, you know, Rogue One is the best example Ooh. of this, where they gave you a trailer. They gave you the idea of the movie. They gave you the feel. It's a heist movie. Mm -hmm. Here's the plot. They're going for this stuff. You know, you've got, you know, there's this reluctant hero, you know, the reluctant heroine. And then she's, I hate you. I hate using the word heroine. Uh, <laughs> there's this reluctant hardly narcotic drug um but you know there's this reluctant hmm. hero and uh you know and they're gonna go steal the death star plans and do stuff like that and that was all in the trailer but like 80 percent of the trailer was footage that wasn't even in the movie like they weren't running on the on the beach with with betamax tapes like like that's what it looked like in the trailer almost but that's not what happened in the movie you know, you got the, the TIE fighter confrontation, which I remember a lot of people bitching because, well, you know, that looked cool. It's like, quit crying. The story, the movie was awesome. Um, Cry. It's easier to complain, by the way, than it is to compliment. So I'm yeah. pretty sure that that's why the world is so freaking negative nowadays. Is people are yeah. so easy to jump on the whole, this sucks, rather than saying, that was really awesome. Mm -hmm. You know, I loved 80, 90% of it. They would rather fixate on the 10 or 20 that they really hated. and uh, And I hate that. But uh, I digress. Um, but yeah, Disney has been really good with the uh, Star Wars trailers as far as kind of giving you a feel for the movie without spoiling it. Yeah. Great uh, comeback, Shane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, right. I agree. Now, I agree. Now, Lee, before, before we go, we're, it's like we're going to plug your piece a little bit. Uh, we can it's like uh for those of you who are watching this on youtube lee has been uh, so uh, has been working very diligently on this fantastic obi-wan uh in uh just go ahead and t I, I, i'm assuming it's in pencil go ahead and tell us just about just the let piece, him lee. do it just let him do it yeah yeah so um uh essentially i don't have a face cam <laughs> so uh when they said hey would you like to do this stream or the, the podcast i was like yeah sure I'm set up for live streaming. I'm set up for showing artwork, not my face. Um, you know, I have a face for radio. So uh, I I really, you know, and I have a hands for like a meat grinder. But I really think that the, uh, uh, you know, 
yeah I, I don't like showing my face so anyways <laughs> i'm ugly <laughs> but uh uh this piece i just i wanted to do something and i thought it would be kind of fun to do a, an obi-wan piece so i drew this today and uh was trying to get as much of it done as possible i was hoping to finish it during the stream i'm almost done but uh not quite um but uh but yeah this is uh, done in pencils it is actually i've been using prismacolor but in particular uh these holbein color pencils are actually what i've been using most of this with and i only recently discovered these and uh, i use a lot of holbein art materials so i didn't realize they had color pencils until about a month ago and uh I really like these. Um, these actually rank up there with the uh, polychromo stuff that I use from Faber-Castell. Uh, the other brand, these actually, uh, mm -hmm. color purple that I use. But, um, but yeah, so I've been using, uh, you know, those three brands, Prismacolor, Polychromos, and uh, Holbein color pencils. Uh, and I just thought it'd be kind of cool to do a, a Vader piece. Uh, personally, if you guys are interested, this is actually the the base of it, uh, what I plan on doing is for San Diego Comic-Con, uh, I need, I wanted a couple more big pieces. So I'm doing this one and I'm doing a third sister piece also with Darth cool. Vader kind of looming behind her. And uh, those will be done so for a week so we can display them at Comic-Con, but they, they will both be paintings. This is the black and white stage. And then uh, I will actually do another version of this that will be fully painted. And I want to kind of do a Bernie Fuchs kind of style if you're not familiar with that artist. Um, but, uh, uh, but I love, you know, I just, I've never done anything in his style before and I was like, that'd eh, be kind of cool. So yeah. And I'll probably do that on my Twitch stream, <laughs> nice. which Brendan helps out on yes, when he's I do. not on work and well, Shane can come in and help out occasionally, but Sh Shane hasn't been around in a while. We got to get you, we got to oh. get you back on a stream, man. Oh. I want to get Shane back on Shane's my, Shane's my brother. I got to get him. Yeah, we, we gotta we gotta we gotta get something we gotta get something going. Well, we we're well, what uh, we were talking about doing something maybe on uh, getting the Friday Friday back up again. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. All right. So I've just been so swamped with work, so I haven't had a chance to do that yet. Yeah. Well, but, that's uh, about. Yeah. And my Twitch is on here somewhere, so yeah, go there. <laughs> yes, <laughs> his Twitch will. So his Twitch is right there, and also in the description down below. Uh, uh, what cool. are your thoughts in terms of what do you think is going to happen in the climax? It's like in the final episode of Star Wars Obi Wan. Leave us a thumbs up, thumbs down, or a comment in the comments section. Make sure to subscribe and ring the bell and all that fun stuff. My name is Brendan. I am the Nerd of Many Faces. That has been Shane at FDS Cosplay. The sassy Swede way over on the right and below has been Lee Cozy uh, at Cozy Art at Kindergoth. Uh, uh, goes live on Twitch ev just about dang near every single Tuesday at 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So if you want to check out more of his art, that would be fantastic. We'd love to have you come on by. And for now... We are the Knights of Nerd End. Thank you for joining us at this special edition roundtable. Have a good evening, good afternoon, or good day, and we'll see you at the next one.